The term sell in wrestling refers to being on the receiving end of a move and then making it look realistic. The wrestler is selling the idea that they're hurt to the people watching the match. Over the history of pro wrestling, a handful of superstars have garnered a reputation for being too good at selling, sometimes to their own detriment. Oh but when somebody oversells a move, it means they're going a bit far with it. Some people like it, some people don't. But there's no denying that it could be downright hilarious. Keith Lee with a spirit bomb. So in this video, I break down the top 10 oversellers in wrestling history. Takes another shot right to the throat area. And Catching the boot. Oh, Cobra oh, strike! Oh, look at him! Oh, oh, oh! Oh my God, what a stunner! Special mentions go out to Greg the Hammer Valentine. Headbutt, Valentine. Watch out, atomic drop. And a big right hand. I'm gonna set up the hammer, headbutt, that'll help him out and down. Whoa. Jerry the King Lawler. King is hoisted over the top. Here we go, yeah. That's it. Another DDT. Oh, goes for the clothesline, the King goes down. Oh, no. Jerry the King Lawler going all the way down to the bottom of the ramp. And the beast, Brock Lesnar. Number 10, Triple H. There is no doubt that Triple H is one of the best inside the squared circle, but he's been known to oversell on a number of occasions. Whether it's his classic turnbuckle bump inspired by Harley Race, where he flips outside the ring. His hilarious selling of the Stone Cold Stunner competing with The Rock. Or his own version of the flare flop. World Championship on SmackDown. The game might have taken the selling a bit far at times, but there is no denying that it was so entertaining and still remembered to this day. Number 9, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase was considered one of the finest in-ring workers of his generation. DiBiase was regularly the victim of hot tag comebacks by the good guys. He'd frequently bounce around the ring and act like he just got knocked out. He was also notable for perfecting a forward and backward flip on the mat. In particular, from his failed double axe handle from the turnbuckle. Number 8, Scott Hall. As Razor Ramon, he didn't go too overboard with the selling, but when he made the move to WCW, Scott Hall would frequently take it too far in the most hilarious way possible. Here we go! And he connects both times. The facial expressions combined with the flailing around the ring made him so entertaining to watch. I've never seen a human being do anything like this in my life! This has never been done in our sport! Kevin Nash better be it! <laughs> Have a look back at his uncensored 1998 match with Sting, and some would say it was Shawn Michaels and Hogan-esque in terms of overselling throughout the match. Even when he made his way back to the WWE in 2002, he didn't disappoint. Number 7, Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn used to love bumping around the ring. Flipping and flapping like he was in a pinball machine. Some of his most infamous oversells include the unique sell of the Stone Cold Stunner. Oh, stunner. Running headfirst into the corner post. Oh. And flipping in the air when taking a clothesline. Oh, that is over. Look out. Oh, nobody there for Mr. Ass. Oh. There's no denying that Billy Gunn had some amazing oversells. The Undertaker and Austin. They don't, they don't like each other. We said that earlier. Number six, Devon Dudley. Devon Dudley's selling was infamous. I mean, if you haven't seen him selling that chair shot from ECW as if he was having a seizure, you're in for a treat. And the Dudley boys are down. Oh my God, he just crushed the man's ball. He also mastered the classic leg tremble when getting hit with a high-flying move. 
Picture perfect 450 split. As well as frequently going into convulsions, which would be called out by the commentators. His overselling was so good that years later, Xavier Woods even imitated him when being hit with a 3D through the table. He's trembling on the table. Now, before we go on to the top five, let's reminisce on some of the true MVPs when it comes to overselling. I'm talking about the referees, managers, and announcers who have really perfected the art over the years. Oh, oh. Hyper hit past me. a springboard off the chair and nailed the official. You got him right square in the face. Both have big matches coming. Oh my! Oh, oh no! Oh, no. no. It took you so much punishment. Wait a minute. What the hell was that for? Oh, they did. Oh, they did. Oh, they did. Oh, Stunner! Superplex! Oh, 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 my God! The, the ring imploded! Kiyota came out! Oh no! Oh no! Le dieron a mi amigo! A Hugo! Number 5, Rick Rude. Ravishing Rick Rude was known for his extremely shredded upper body and his ability to work inside the squared circle and bump all over the place. Whether he was being tossed from pillar to post or bearing the crack of his ass for the world to see, Rude knew how to turn it up to 11 when it came to selling a story. He was so known for his dramatic overselling, there is even a Twitter page devoted to his selling of the atomic drop. Into the rough, elevation, oh. atomic drop. Sending Root in. Oh. Oh. Atomic drop. Whoa. And believe me, Jim Ross, you want to see what that feels like. I'll pass. I'll take your word for it. What a legacy to leave. Number four, The Rock. WWE fans have shared videos, GIFs, and social media posts of The Rock's classic selling countless times as the years go on. Rock was among the few wrestlers that reached the highest level who cared more about making his opponents look good. The infamous sells for the Stone Cold Stunner will live in infamy for Rock's over-the-top selling. While the Stunner is a great move itself, The Rock added a special effect to it. He used to flip all the way across the ring as if he'd been hit by a train. He mentioned that he did this because he and Austin would bet cases of beer on how crazy Rock could get with his cell of the famous stunner. Number three, Ric Flair. The Nature Boy Ric Flair is one of the most entertaining wrestlers ever, be on the mic or wrestling. Ric Flair actually sold moves in a very humorous way, sometimes which many often felt as overselling. He took those simple moves and tried his best to make them look dangerous. At the time, it definitely worked, but looking back is hilarious because of how far the business has come since then. From a simple chop to the chest, to an Irish whip in the corner, Flair would sell it all. Flair did the turnbuckle spot in nearly every match. What he would do is put his hands on both sides of the middle rope by the turnbuckle, turn his body upside down and then go over the top. He's also infamous for his exaggerated flare flop. After being on the receiving end of a barrage of strikes from foes, Rick would stumble out of the corner and fall flat on his face in comedic fashion. Had to plan offensively. Eddie Guerrero, I talked to him before the big Oh, the nose dive! The championship matches! Flair goes face first! Rick made a Hall of Fame career out of embellishing the impact of many moves, but it also helped him become loved by millions. And, oh my! And Hardy with an enziguri, and the nature war caught in the temple. Oh. Certainly fair play. Oh, or, or flair play. Oh, 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 o
Number two, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels thrived in every area of wrestling when making his name in WWE. Michaels would become known for his selling throughout his career, but like the others in this list, amongst the great selling, there were some heavily exaggerated oversells. Shawn Michaels was often the prototype of a WWE superstar that intentionally oversold. Bouncing from turnbuckle to turnbuckle and flipping over the top rope countless times. Oh my goodness, over the top to the outside. Michaels was also known for taking a page out of Ric Flair's book by getting Irish whipped into the corner and flipping up and over the turnbuckle to the floor. His most infamous overselling came from his match with Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam 2005, where he flopped around like a dying fish throughout the match. There are better, more positive examples of the man selling in an overly dramatic fashion, and they're all awesome to watch. Michaels with the back down. Michaels <laughs> Sam Michaels has got to be on Green Street. Number one, Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig became known for his selling more than anything else when working against other credible talents in strong matches. Now Michaels really going after Mr. Perfect, an inverted and Drop. Ric Flair may have put the concept of overselling on the map, but Mr. Perfect brought it to the forefront of the WWF. Perfect's matches against Bret Hart, Tito Santana, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Kerry Von Erich, and many more saw him flying all over the ring, twisting and turning upside down several times a match. At WrestleMania 6, Perfect sold like crazy for Brutus the Barber Beefcake, at SummerSlam 1991, despite being in quite intense pain due to a back injury, Perfect was keen to put Bret Hart over in a big way in front of a Madison Square Garden crowd. One of his most famous oversells was to receive an Irish trip into the corner and then dramatically front flip out as if the impact had been too powerful. Mr. Perfect. That's been hard in the corner, so hard in fact. Even when his career was more limited, Hennig still did his best to thump around the ring. In the title here tonight, Goldberg chops if you will, in our sport. And right now, Hennig's not thinking of chops. Between two. Oh, 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 Hennig's selling style was his signature and that of a pioneer, as it would lead to future comparisons down the road for the other men on this list. And makes it hurt. <laughs> and for that reason, he has to top our list today. Dog overcame that low, low blow. Oh. As Mr. Perfect. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments who you think is the greatest overseller of all time. If you like this one, be sure to check out our video where we rank the top 10 best mic workers of all time. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.